Franklin lieutenant, young girl, maybe 20, 21 years of age, beaten almost to death. Stewart doesn't give her much of a chance. She was found lying in the bushes in there. Who found her? A nursemaid, Inspector Greb, the name of uh, Ann Tobias, 1841 Crescent Place. Works for a family by the name of Taggart. She was out walking with a Taggart's little girl when she spotted the victim. Where's the nurse now? She took the child back to the house. My partner's with her. She didn't see anybody else around, nothing suspicious. Uh -huh. That's where she was found, in there. Any identification? No purse or anything like that. She was unconscious. She couldn't talk. What about a weapon? Couldn't find a sign of one. The little girl picked this up, dropped it right down again. Was she wearing the other one? No, stocking feet. The other shoes in there. On that bush, Ben. Must have come off her foot while she was dragged in here from the street, huh? Stick around till the lab boys get here, will you, Petrie, and see if nobody touches any of this? Sure thing, Lieutenant. Better have Asher check out the caretakers and gardeners. Might come up with a possible witness. Okay. I better call missing persons, too. Fracture of the jaw, skull fracture, multiple bruises, lost a lot of blood. It'll be a miracle if she pulls through. Still a Jane doll? Mm-hmm. Any identifying marks, scars, anything like that? No. Missing persons, any help? Nobody answering her description been reported recently. How about dentures and bridges? No, her teeth are in excellent shape. Narrow band of whiter skin around the wrist and on the ring finger. Well, there wasn't any watch or ring in her personal effects. The nails are cut short and square across. The pads of her fingertips are hard, almost calloused. Now, guitar players have hands like that, sometimes piano players too. There wasn't any identifying labels or marks in her clothing. Maybe the lab will come up with something. Pretty girl like that. I wonder who she is, Ben. <laughs> Inspector Grimm. Hello. Lieutenant. Inspector. Mr. Sukiyamo is a gardener at St. Francis Wood. The police asked us to try to remember anything unusual, anything suspicious that we might have seen around the park. Did you see anything? Yes, I did. Around 6 o'clock this morning. I was irrigating some shrubs and trees just over the hill from where the police say the girl was found. I just finished with that section and started across the rise for another. That's when I saw this man, Lieutenant. He was running across the grass towards the car parked at the roadside. He ran to the car, and he gunned it around in a U-turn. And he tore off towards the park exit. You say this was around 6 o'clock this morning? Yes. Do you know what kind of a car it was? It was a dark blue sedan. A Plymouth, I think. 47 or 48. Well, did you get the license number? No, the car wasn't close enough for that. Well, did you get a good look at the man? Yes, I did, Lieutenant. He was a big guy. About 200 pounds. He was wearing a old brown dirty windbreaker and dirty gray slacks. Would you recognize him if you saw him again? I'd never forget him, Lieutenant. I'd remember him. Let's take a look at some pictures. Bob, take this up the lab. Three lieutenants, they come about the closest to the men I saw. Sure hard to tell from photos. Well, one of these men has brown hair, the other two are black. We'll have these men picked up for the lineup, Mr. Sukiyama. Like to have you come down and take a look at them. Be glad to. Lieutenant? Goodbye. Goodbye, Inspector. Thank you. Well, what will that be? We'll let you know. Good. 
Wouldn't hurt to check up on Mr. Succhiano. Yeah, his story sounded pretty pat. I'll have Fred pick up these guys right away. Lieutenant Guthrie. Wait a minute. Yeah? Okay, thanks. Okay, Matt. Johnny Mackey just found a 47 blue Plymouth sedan at Inspiration Point. There's blood in the front seat. Hi, Johnny. Hi, Lieutenant. Paul Mackey. Inspector. Understand your found something? Yes, right over here. in the neighborhood tipped me off. They were playing around here and they ran across it. There's not much doubt about those stains. Anna Witkowski. W-I-T-K-O-W-S-K-I. Got it. 4310 Steiner. Wonder if she could be our Jane Doe. Stick around in the lab, boys. Get it, will you? Yes, sir. Anna Witkowski in. Who wants me, Anna? Who? Police officers. Police. Police, come in. What police want with my daughter? Well, is she at home? Why you want to know? Well, it's just routine. Is she home? I tell police nothing. You go. I tell nothing. Well, you don't understand, Mrs. Wachowski. We're I just trying... I understand. Police. No good. My Anna is good. This free country. You go. Is this your daughter, Anna? You go. Anna is good girl. She do no wrong. Well, we didn't say that she did anything wrong. Then why are you here? Why? Well, did she come home last night? I tell nothing. Beat, kill, I tell nothing. How long have you lived in this country? Four years. Anna already have a first paper, citizenship. This free country, police cannot bother her. Mrs. Wachowski, the police in this country are not like they are where you came from. We're not here to hurt people. We want to protect them. Then. What do you want with Anna? There was a girl hurt in the park last night. Oh? She's in the hospital now. We think she might be Anna. We'd like you to come with us and look at her. Oh, it's trick. Anna's good girl. Nobody want to hurt her. Nobody. We're afraid that somebody did. It's my fault. What happened to Anna is all my fault. 
Why do you say that, Mrs. Witkowski? For let her work in that place. What place? This cafe. Small, dirty cafe. And what's the name of the place? It's called Fandango. The one on Pacific Avenue? The... We live far on Fresno. Anna want music. But we need money for food, for house. So Anna get job. I let her. Because of that, she die. No, the doctor says she's going to be all right, Mrs. Bukowski. No. She die. Uh, Mrs. Witkowski, we have to ask you some questions. Appreciate your cooperation. Da. Anna owns a car, doesn't she? Da. Did she drive it to work last night? Mm. Did anyone go with her, man, woman? No, she go alone. And what time was that? It's seven o'clock. She always leave at seven o'clock, work till two in the morning, then come home. Only last night, she not come home. Did she call you, tell you that she was going to be late, anything like that? No, I not hear from her. Not until you come see me. I can do nothing. Well, does she have any boyfriends? Any men she knows, friends she goes out with? To Anna, men friends mean nothing. Only music is all she care. Only music. What kind of a watch and ring was she wearing? A watch is small gold with two diamonds on the face it had. What make was it? I don't know. Did it have any inscriptions, engraving, anything? I don't know. And what about the ring? This emerald and white gold was mine from old country. I give to Anna on her 20th birthday. That was two days before we come here. Well, thanks. We'll do the best we can. To my Anna, music is life. She work in cafe, da, for money. But also is music. She, she's always good. She go to work seven o'clock. Come home 2.30 in the morning. It's always like that. She go no place. She is good girl. You understand, good girl? We understand. It's curse on me for let my good girl work in dirty place. It's my fault. It's all my fault. Should be all right. Yeah, that's right, Fred. Ask Hennessy in the pawn shop detail to send out a flyer on the watch, the ring, and the description that Tsukiyama gave us of the suspect. Yeah. We'll check back later. All right. Mr. Dahl. Three weeks. And what did she do? She played the piano. The gals come out and do a bit and go back. Well, we got to have something going on between numbers while we serve the drinks, you know. So Anna made with the music. Played the piano real good, too. No rhythm blues stuff. Good music. Well, I figured maybe it'd sort of give the joint clash, you know. How'd you make out? Oh, not too good. We got lots of kicks. The customer squawked she wasn't friendly, you know. Just that one guy. He didn't squawk. What guy was that? Well, he come in here three or four times. He uh, took this table right here. He just, just sat watching her all the time. 
He never said nothing. Just took his food and his drinks and sat for a couple of hours. Kept watching her all the time. What was his name? I don't know. Just a guy. You know what he looked like? Yeah, he was a big, thick-set guy. Was he in here last night? Oh, I don't keep a time clock on these guys. Would you recognize him if you saw him again? Yeah, sure. We'd like to have you come down to the hall to the lineup tomorrow, Mr. Doyle. Sure, if you think it'll be any help. You know, in a kind of way, maybe I should have done what I was going to do. What was that? I was going to fire Anna two weeks ago. Too classy for this dump. Okay, thanks a lot. <laughs> Do you have a 47 Plymouth, Fred? I guess so, maybe. So where'd you get it, Fred? Get what? The 1947 dark blue Plymouth sedan. I wasn't driving no car. Borrow that first guy's hat there. Put it on. Now let's see your profile. A quarter turn to the left. Now the other one. All right, step back. Next man is Jack Carlson, suspicion of narcotic violation. Step right up to the square, Jack. Why did they pick you up? Gosh, I don't know. Well, they found 15 sticks of marijuana, a hypo needle, and five caps of H in your room, Jack. They did? And you still don't know why they picked you up? Gosh, I don't know. You know anything about a 1947 Plymouth sedan? Put on your hat. Quarter turn to the left. The left, I said. No, that's not him, Inspector Asher. It's none of those guys up there. He was bigger, All heavier. Right. Step back. Well, thanks for a good try. Gorson says this Anna Witkowski is going to make it. Good. According to the doc, the man we're after follows a pattern. A cycle, repetitive crimes. It's only a question of time before he strikes again. Inspector Grab. What's that address? Yeah, we'll be right down. That was Hennessy. Every set man just pawned Anna's watch and ring. <laughs> and what did this man look like? Well, like in the description. A big fella, about 200 pounds. I felt like kicking myself when I saw him walk out. Why is that? Well, I still recognize him right away from that description. Well, has he been in here before? Yeah, three or four times. He usually pawns a revolver, 38 caliber Colt. First time he's ever come in with any jewelry. Let's see your buy book. Yes. That's the name and address he gave you, huh? Yes. That's the same name and address he always gives you? I don't know. At least we find out, though. Yeah. He redeemed that gun of his just two weeks ago. Yeah, there you are. Yes, yeah, different, all right. Here he calls himself James Wendry Olive Hotel. Seems to me that's the name he's used up to today. James Wendry, huh? Got a telephone? Yes, back here. The Olive Hotel's a little flea bag over near the wharf. I don't suppose it'll help you much. They better seldom use their right names when the stuff is hot. Well, do you know anything else about this man, Mr. Benson? Where he works, who he knows? Not a thing, Lieutenant. He's a queer sort of duck, though. In what way? Well, it's hard to describe. I guess it's his eyes, mostly. Something strange. Not normal about him. First time he's ever brought in any jewelry. There's a James Wendry living at the Alley Hotel, all right. The answer's a description. He's not in, but he works at the Fisherman's Wharf Novelty Company. Thank you, Mr. Benson.
That's him in the second booth over there, the heavy set fella. It's gonna be tough to take him if he has a gun. We'll approach him one at a time. I'll start talking to him, try to take him easy. Matt, you go around the booth there and keep out of sight. All right, but wait till I get there. To cover us. Always tell a cop. You shouldn't have come here. Don't try to use that gun. Now don't try to come any closer, mister. I didn't mean to kill her. I just wanted to scare her. But she was scared of me. She shouldn't have been scared of me. Just because I was hiding in the car when she walked away from work that night, I made her drive out to the park. She shouldn't have been scared of me. I loved her. I didn't want to kill her. I just wanted to talk to her, that's all. I didn't mean to. Now you stop right there, mister. Don't come any closer. I'll try to take my gun away and put me in jail. I'm not gonna let you. I'll kill you. No, you have me wrong, Jim. I'm here because I'm your friend. Don't try to use that gun. Friend? That's right, Jim. I'm here to help you that gun down. I don't have no friends. Yes, you have, Jim. I'm your friend. I want to help you. Let me have the gun. You're lying. You're lying. No, I'm not lying. I want to help you. You're lying. I don't want to have to do this. Just like I didn't want to do it to Anna. But I would have had to kill you. There's nothing else I can do. I would have had to kill you. Huh, Ben? I didn't mean it. I didn't mean to hurt her. I never meant it at all. You believe that, don't you? Don't you? Francisco Beat is produced with the cooperation of the San Francisco Police Department. We are grateful to Chief of Police Michael Gaffey and the men in his organization who have contributed their time and effort to make this program possible.